few minutes late. Um, as a preliminary matter, this is Mary Beth Lynch. I'm the chairperson. Please permit me to confirm that all members and staff are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Paul George. I'm gonna take him a minute or two. <laughs> I do not see him, so I am going to skip to Lisa Cosette and come back to Paul. Lisa? Here. Peter? I'm okay here. here? Here. Thank you. Patrick Fullen? Here. And uh, Matt Armenti will be standing in for a hearing a little bit later. Matt, I see you. Here. Great. And Paul George? I'm going to send him the information once more. Hopefully he'll be able to join shortly. Okay. I'm going to move along. Um, staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Bernard Cahill? Present. Rowan McAllister? Present. Krista Mapolo. Present. Wonderful. Thank you. Good evening. This open meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals is being conducted remotely consistent, consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020, due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. The order, which you can find posted with agenda materials for this meeting, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely, so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliver deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will feature public commentary. The Board of Appeals is convening by telephone conference and video conference via Google Hangout. You may join by telephone by calling 1-978-286-0409 and entering the following PIN, 508-620-746-POUND. We're now turning to the first item on the agenda. Before we do so, please permit me to cover some Hi, basic ground rules of clear. Yeah, I was calling. I didn't see you on the meeting. Our, uh, can, Bernie, can we get um, muted? Thank you. Um, of our business and to ensure accurate minute meetings. I, Mary Beth Lynch, will introduce each board member or staff member who has the lead role for this particular item or guest speaker associated with the item on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, the chair will go down the list of members first and then staff members, inviting each by name to provide any comment or questions. I will then call upon the members to offer a motion and then for a second, please hold until your name is called. Please remember to mute and unmute your phones by pressing star six or mute your computer when you are not speaking as to not trigger your camera feed or background noise. This is for items with co public comment. After members have spoken, the chair will afford public comment as follows. I will ask each member of the public who wishes to speak to identify themselves by name and address only. For any responses, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you. State your name before speaking. If members wish to engage in a discussion with other members, please do so through the chair, taking care to identify yourself. Finally, each vote taken in this meeting will conduct be conducted by roll call vote. Okay, in addition to keeping your microphones muted until called upon, I would remind the public to please keep any questions or comments brief and to the point. All questions should be made through the chair. First order on the agenda is a reorganization of our board. Each year, April 1st comes along and we are required per the Zoning Board of Appeals Rules and Regulations um, to um, open the positions and ask for nominees. Would anyone like to nominate themselves or another member for the position of chairperson? Madam Chair, I would like to nominate you, Mary Beth Lynch, for chair. I thank you. I appreciate that. Can I get a second? Second. All in favor? Paul George? <coughs> in favor of what? <laughs> he joined. There you are. <laughs> Hello, Paul. I'm just joining. In favor of what? Um, reappointing me as the chairperson. We made uh, a motion seconded, and now we're going through roll call vote. We're roll call voting, Paul. He said I. I said okay, I. Okay, thank you. Lisa Cosette? Aye. Peter Mulcahy? Aye. 
Aye. Mary Beth Lynch, aye, and it's so moved. Next up, I'd like to get a nomination for position of vice chair. Can I get a nomination, please? Okay, I, nominate, I would like- I nominate to... for vice chair. Thank you, Thank I you. second that motion. Can I get a <clears throat> response from Paul, please? Aye. Lisa Cosette? Aye. Peter Mulcahy? Aye. Patrick Fullen? Aye. Mary Beth Lynch, aye. Next up, uh, would anyone like to nominate themselves or another for the position of clerk? Very nominate. prestigious position. I nominate Mr. George. Second. All in favor, uh, Mr. George. Aye. Lisa Cosette. Aye. Peter Mulcahy. Aye. Patrick Fullen. Aye. Mary Beth Lynch. Aye. So moved. Thank you very much. On to our next agenda item. <clears throat> okay. Um, we're going to do approval of some um, prior minutes. Um, might I get a motion to approve the minutes of February 24th, 2020? So moved as stated. Can I get a second? Second. Thank you. All in favor? Um, Paul George? Aye. Lisa Cosette? Aye. Peter Mulcahy? Aye. Patrick Fullen? Aye. Mary Beth Lynch? Aye. So moved. Next, uh, I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the December 21st, 2020 meetings. Can I get a a motion, please. I make a motion as stated. Can I get a second? Second. All in favor? Paul George. Aye. Lisa Cosette. Aye. Peter Mulcahy. Aye. Patrick Fullen. Aye. Mary Beth Lynch. Aye. So moved. Wonderful. Moving on to the public hearing. Our first six thirty hearing. This is regarding three egret circle located in the rural B, rural B cluster development. Um, appellant is Bhavani Ganapathy. This is um, for a special permit of section six table one to operate a yoga workshop in their basement. This public hearing for three egret circle is a new public hearing. Could the applicant please introduce themselves and explain to the board and to the public what they're looking for? Hello, um, good evening. My name is Bhavani. Um, I got my Hatha Yoga teacher training uh, certification in 2018, and uh, I wish to teach very small groups of people um, classical Hatha Yoga. And I thought it's the best place to start would be my debasement because it requires minimal investment from me at this time. Um, and uh, as uh, I think Richard kindly pulled up this uh, plan that I had sent. Um, I saw that we need to use the basement only 25% of the floor area that is uh, uh, there. And I have uh, um, shown that we would only do three people at a time because there are a couple of pillars in the basement which obstruct the projection and the demonstration videos that I have to use. So it approximately comes to 25. Um, it may be, I think, a bit less or a bit more, a percentage here or more. I don't, uh, I'm not entirely sure. Um, but yes, so I there would not be any excessive noise um, because it's only a few people at a time. Um, I'm thinking we would be able to accommodate the parking in the driveway in our driveway. Um, in terms of any other structural changes, we have not done any. So, and it is in the best interest of, uh, uh, you know, general well being of people uh, and residents of this town and others. So, I um, humbly ask the board to consider this and approve. Thank you. Yeah. Ms. McAllister, do you have anything further to add? Um, I would just like to add that a waiver request has been um, submitted. Um, staff has no problem. You'll just have to vote on it, just a reminder. Uh, and then 
it is generally customary that um, decisions of in-home businesses are conditioned um, for one year um, for a return to the board um, for a renewal of that special permit. So I would ask the board to consider that condition as well. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. McAllister. Uh, let's work through the board to see if anyone has questions or comments with regard to this applicant. Uh, let's start with Lisa Cosette, please. Hi there. So um, very happy about this business opportunity for you. I am concerned, however, about uh, off-street parking. So it looks like you'll have, from the diagram, at most three uh, people coming at one time, plus yourself as the instructor. Is that correct? Yes. And uh, forgive me, I don't have it in front of me, but are do you have a garage for your own vehicles and are, are you suggesting that the driveway be used for the other three potentially? Yeah, so this is Vijay, I'm a Bhavani's <laughs> husband. I can speak for that if you don't mind. Sure. Yeah, so we have a one car garage where my car can get inside the car, garage and within our driveway, we can park close to four cars. Okay. And, and then on the road, of course, uh, this is a cul-de-sac road. So we have a possibility to park one more car too. So parking shouldn't be an issue. Okay. I mean, I, I hope I answered your question. Yes, thank you. Um, and I can see the cul-de-sac. Uh, cul uh, one follow-up question. Uh, could mm -hmm. you confirm the hours again of operation? Generally, we this is not going to be like a studio where it is open all the time and uh, uh, regular hours of working would be there. This is only um, probably on a uh, on-demand basis, mostly. Um, otherwise, it's generally done in the early mornings and in the evenings. Sometimes it would be a one-off session for a one hour in the afternoon. So it's not set hours. And it's only on demand basis, mostly. OK, thank you. Um, I may have one follow up after everyone else, Madam Chair. Thank you. Peter. Um, I don't really have any issue with this. I would I would just sort of flag um, the idea of limiting it to, to three customers at a time, I think, makes sense, at least for this uh, for a first year in order to see how it goes and see how it works for the neighborhood. And that might be a condition we might want to add to the permit. Thank you. Patrick, questions, comments? No, I would just like to hear uh, um, what any neighbors have to say. OK, thank you. And um, Mr. George, questions, comments? Yeah, I'd like to put a time of operation on it, like from what time in the morning to a certain time in the evening and no later than a certain time. Okay. Um, I may I, may I answer the question in a little more detail? Maybe. Yes. yes so please. generally what we do is we choose sometime between eight to 11 in the morning. And Usually in the evening, it is between four to seven. Sometimes when people have questions, it goes a little longer. So that's the reason why I did not uh, put an actual timing. We I cannot simply close the session. So it might be sometime from four to eight, no longer. And even eight is usually too late. So we it would be four to seven or 7.30. And mornings would be eight to 11 or 11.30. And, and to add to that, the reason why we have a break is the yoga has to be done on an empty stomach. So we, we would like to leave the 11 to 4. We typically don't class take any classes because that gives them time to have their lunch and For then lunch. have a four-hour break. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, so would it, be okay to have, would it be okay to have the hours from 8 to 8? Yeah, yes, that, that's fine. Paul? Is that only question you have, comment? That's it. OK, great. And I, um, too, have just similar, um, be very um, interested to hear what your neighbors think. Um, and parking, I think, to me, would be the only sticking point, knowing that you have a one-car garage. Um, uh, those are little, those are short driveways, if my memory serves me over on egret. So just want to make sure that the neighbors aren't, you know, 
impacted in any way with um, extra cars. So um, with that being said, this is a public hearing. Are there any members of the public present who have questions or comments? If you do, I'm gonna give you a few seconds to identify yourself. Let us know you're out there and then we're gonna need your name and address, please. Star six, if you're looking to unmute yourself. Maybe all the neighbors are taking yoga right now. <laughs> Hello? Okay, it Hello? sounds like we might have somebody. Hello? Uh, Hello, can uh, you hear me? Yes, we can. Can you please identify okay. yourself with your name and address? Sure, I'm uh, Namrata Patel from Four Egret Circle. Thank you. You can please go ahead with your comments. Um, so I have one concern is about um, just parking because uh, my driveway uh, is straight back out into the front driveway of three a great circle. And when uh, we are backing out the car from the driveway, if there's cars, uh, those are parked out um, right in front. Uh, there's always, uh, this has happened previously with previous neighbors, the uh, cars have gotten hit. And so that's my concern that if there's cars, those are parked right next to the mailbox or right very close to their driveway. When we back out our car, we can hit that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's so it's just that I would request that I mean first thing like I'm I'm probably going to be the first customer, but <laughs> it's um it's just uh if the parking can be done like keeping like a one and a half car space uh after their uh, mailbox and no parking around the corner, uh then it will be uh, good because I mean I have my children backing out cars and so that worries me. Sure. Sure. Mm hmm Okay. Thank you for those comments. Um, if there's anyone else out there that would like to be heard on this matter, please let us know you're there. Can you give it a few I'm seconds? Scared. Can I ask a question? Um, e sure. Is this uh, seven days a week or is it certain days this is going to be? Good question. Because this is an on-demand class, I, um, it could be, I mean, theoretically it is seven days a week, but um, mostly people when they are off during the weekends is when class happens. And um, if I have more than uh, what can be comfortable, okay, I'll go a little bit more into how many people can realistically come. I am saying three people, but, um usually only if it's kids i have three people otherwise it's usually two people because uh, one of the requirements under which we teach and we operate is there has to be minimum three feet distance between one person and uh, uh, another person diagonally and even in front of us and behind us so realistically speaking i can i probably would not have more than two people and it would uh, generally be weekends but sometimes people um, would do evenings in the weekdays, but uh, that's very rare. So it's mostly weekends. Okay. Thank you. Can I ask uh, a question? Uh, yes. Um, so as the state relaxes the mandate of social distancing, um, these numbers might change, right? So, Bhavani, so, I think uh, we talked about it being 25% of your basement space. Is that correct? Yes. And even uh, the 25% is not just due to uh, COVID or even board uh, requirements. I find that the way our uh, finished basement is, there are two columns uh, that are kind of almost uh, two feet wide. There are two of them. And the wall on which I'm projecting, I, I can uh, actually, I, I thought I might even show it if need, if needed, um, that 
when we use the other side of the basement, even though it is free space, people cannot uh, see the projection or they cannot see me and I cannot see them. So I cannot really, that would not be the ideal way to take the class. So that prevents me from using the basement for more than a uh, few people at a time. It's not really due to COVID at all um, or even any other requirement. If I have more than this number, I would usually, I'm thinking uh, once the COVID situation uh, is somewhat under control, then we might rent a space on an ongoing basis if we have that many people to justify. This is only if the numbers are not justifying, then I do not want to have to rent uh, because I cannot afford it. So, yeah. Sure. Okay. Okay. Are there any other members of the public that wish to be heard on this matter? Okay, there being no further comments, um, can I get a motion to close the public hearing, please? Move to close the hearing. Second. Second. All in favor, Lisa? Aye. Peter? Aye. Patrick? Aye. Paul? Aye. Mary Beth, aye. Okay. Let's um, talk about objections or concerns with regard to the application and let's talk about how everyone feels about this. Lisa, you want to start? Um, I have no issue. Uh, I'd like to uh, sunset it for one year and add the um, days, the hours of day from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. as Mr. George suggested. Um, I'm not sure how we would word the where to park on the street. Um, it looks like the abutter would prefer if cars are parked between three egret and five egret, but I don't believe uh, Ms. McAllister, we can actually put that condition in. Um, so, but I'm I'm fine with it with those conditions that I stated. Okay. Oh, uh Yes, um, Rowan, please go ahead. I just, I just wanted to confirm that yes, Lisa, it's a uh, private road, or excuse me, public road, so CBA cannot control where it's parked. Got it. Thank you. Okay, that's a neighbor to neighbor thing. Um, Patrick, sorry, I'm looking to see who's next. Patrick. Yeah, I agree with uh, Lisa. Um, but yeah, definitely come back in a year, and we'll see what's up. Uh, Peter? I um, agree with Lisa and Patrick. I, I think if we can, I'd like to add the, um, the limitation on the number of cars or the number of clients. Um, it doesn't sound like um, Bavani intends to suddenly have 10 people or something like that, but just to, just to have it in writing somewhere, I think it can't hurt. Yeah, if, if we need 10 people, I need to find a new house. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, can we ask um, Mr. George, your thoughts? I would like to just consider no off street parking. If there's only gonna be three people there, three cars should be able to fit in the driveway. Um, I, I am concerned about that as well, but I'm also concerned that it's too restrictive. It is a cul-de-sac um, there, and there, if, there is something in the um, Google Drive showing um, that cul-de-sac and the areas where there is off-street parking, and I think it, even, you know, just one car, even all, if all three were on on the street, um, as long as they're not right in front of driveways <laughs> or you know across from dri driveways, uh, I think it would be too restrictive. I'll just that's my opinion on that one. Right. Uh, and I would agree with the too restrictive. I think this really comes down to just um, being fair to your neighbors. And certainly you don't want to put your car in a place where your neighbor's going to pull out and hit a car. So. Um, and one other comment, Madam Chair, yes. Mr. George, we all, uh, thankfully will have the one year sunset. Right. So we could revisit it. Yep. That's good. 
Um, okay, so um, let's break this down. Uh, first is I'm going to need a motion to approve the waiver request to not provide a certified plot plan. Motion to approve waiver request. Can I get a second? Second. All in favor, Lisa? Aye. Peter? Aye. Patrick? Aye. Paul? Aye. Mary Beth, aye. Okay, next we need a motion to approve a special permit to operate a yoga workshop in the basement of three egret circle with the conditions that the applicant must return to the board following the period of one year for renewal of the special permit and the hours will be limited to 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Can I get a motion? Motion as stated. Can I get a second? Second. Okay. Oh, yes, Peter. Too, too late to add the condition regarding the number of uh, clients. Oh, uh, we can go back and do that. So, do we have to do, uh, rule Withdraw on this one and do, yeah. do another motion? You can we amend? Just, just, a, just amend your, just amend your motion. Okay. Great. Okay. So, Lisa, do you want to amend it? Uh, sure. Can we amend the previous motion by limiting the number of uh, clients at one time to three? Wonderful. Okay. Can I get a second, please? Second. Thank you. All in favor, Lisa? Aye. Peter? Aye. Patrick? Aye. Paul? Aye. Mary Beth? Aye. So moved. Thank you very much for your time. Enjoy your yoga. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, wonderful. Next up, so um, do we drop off? I'm sorry. Do we drop off? Yes, you can. You can okay. leave, or you can listen to the rest of the meeting if you'd like. Oh, thank you. You might not want to, but that's up this to you. This is our first. This is my first. Uh, it's well, nice to we, know this process. We meet uh, the first Monday of each month or the whatever this is, the third Monday of each month. So you're welcome to join us at any time. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, next up, we've got the hearing for 16 Norcross Point located in the residential B2. Uh, applicant's name is Scott Barrows. This is for special permit and variances to section 4B and section seven, table two, to demolish an existing non-conforming dwelling and construct a new single family dwelling with two new non-conformities. The public hearing for 16 Norcross Point is a new public hearing. Could the applicant please introduce themselves and explain to the board the application and also to the public, please. Yes, uh, this is Robert Murphy. Do you hear me okay? We sure do, Mr. Murphy, thank you. Okay, great, I'm figuring this all out. Uh, I'm representing uh, Scott Barrows, 16, uh, Norcross Point uh, to develop a, a new single family house basically in the same footprint as the existing house and garage. Uh, because this is a, a non conforming lot, we have uh, requested a special permit to uh, develop, redevelop this property with a new house. Uh, we are also asking for a variance on the side yard setback to presently we have an existing dock, dock a deck on the um, northern property line and that is 7.3 feet off the property line we would like to uh, reduce that setback to 6.1 feet and that would allow us to have a stairway and the deck and have a, a second egress from the, um, from the first floor. Uh, the existing deck is actually closer to, to the wetland area. And uh, so we, we've, we've brought back the setback. Uh, we've, we've extended the setback to the, uh, to the deck. Uh, by replacing it with the deck that you're seeing here. Uh, I might also add that we have been before the Conservation Commission and they have reviewed the project. Uh, they were pretty much in agreement with it, but we, we did not have a DEP file number at the time, so they couldn't close the hearing. 
uh, but the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals and the Conservation Commission are the only uh, boards that we need to uh, ad address for this permit. Uh, but as I say, we're, we're going to keep the pavement, the parking in, in the front, everything on the, on the Norcross Point uh, access is pretty much going to stay the same, the grading, things like that. We, we will be replacing the pavement with new pavement. Uh, but the topography will remain pretty much the same. Uh, with that, I'll answer any questions that you might have. Okay, um, Ms. McAllister, anything to add to this? Um, just, I'll just sum it up. Um, it's, there's like, uh, excuse me, Madam Chair, like you read out, there's one special permit because it's a non-conforming, um, existing house and lot. Um, there's two variances, um, as Mr. Murphy said, one is the northerly side yard uh, setback, but there's also a variance required for the front yard. Um, the, I believe it's the existing front yard setback is conforming at 44.6 feet, uh, and that will be decreasing to 15.2. So I believe that is it. Um, Happy to clear up any questions. Okay. Let's um, chat with board members to see whether they have questions or comments. Can we start with Lisa, please? Uh, sure. So I think this is a great plan. Um, I think it's an improvement to a major improvement to what is there already. I uh, normally, when things become more non conforming, um, we all have to look at that a bit more closely, um, but I would approve this. I think the addition of the stairs um, is a, a safety issue, um, and I think adding those stairs makes sense, and it, that it adds to the nonconformity is uh, not an issue for me. So I'm, uh, I'd like to hear what others have to say, but I'm in favor. Okay, thank you. Peter? Um, I uh, agree with Ms. Cosette. I am familiar with the area from rowing. I think similar, I think a, a meeting or so ago, we had another site that was right on the lake. I think this site is actually even more um, qualifying for a variance where it's such a narrow peninsula. The topography is very steep. You got water on both sides. I mean, I, I think it's a sort of textbook case for a variance. So no issues from me. Thank you. Uh, Patrick? No, I agree. I think it looks great. Okay. Paul? I have no questions. Thank you. And I would um, agree with all the other board members. Uh, I mean, the topography there is difficult at best. So it's, it's sort of the, the textbook case, as Peter has said. So I would agree. Um, Given that this is a public hearing, uh, let's open this up to the public for questions or comments and reminding the public to make your comments brief and to the point and identify yourself by your name and address. And I'm gonna give this a couple seconds. If you would like to be heard, you can let us know that either verbally or you can try the raise the hand button, which we've used in the past very successfully. So let's give it a couple seconds, see who's out there. Any of the rowers out there? Neighbors, friends? We always have a hard time in these meetings. We wanna make sure we give plenty of time, but we also don't want to make all 25 people on this call sit and wait forever. So I'm gonna give it a couple more seconds and assume that there are no comments from the public. Okay, can I get a motion to close this public hearing, please? Motion to close. Can I get a second? Second. All in favor, Lisa? Aye. Patrick? Aye. Peter? Aye. Paul? Aye. Mary Beth Lynch, aye. Okay, sounds like there's not a whole lot of objections on this, so. Can I get a motion to approve 
two variances and one special permit to demolish an existing non-conforming dwelling and construct a new single family dwelling with a front yard setback of 15 and two tenths feet and a side yard setback of six and one tenth feet at 16 Norcross Street. Motion to approve as stated. Can I get a second, please? Second. All in favor, Lisa. Aye. Peter? Aye. Patrick? Aye. Paul? Aye. Mary Beth, aye. So moved. Thank you very much, Mr. Murphy, for your um, presentation. Thank you all very much for your time. Have a great Have a evening. Thank you. you. You too. Take care. Okay. Wonderful. Next up, we've um, got a hearing for 378 Maple Avenue, commercial building by Shrewsbury Maple LLC. This is a modification to a variance to section 7 or B and 7 5D to amend the text of the previously approved sign. The public hearing of 378 Maple Ave is a new public hearing. Could the applicant please introduce themselves and explain their application to the board and to the public? Hi, um, thank you again for uh, allowing us to come back in front of the board. This is a um, modification to the um, approval that was given to us in, I believe, the last meeting uh, for this sign to be placed on top of the building at Marketplace Shrewsbury, 378 Maple Ave. Um, we're requesting a minor modification to the sign, which includes adding the words Maple and Nine and Shrewsbury below the Marketplace. The impact is, um, just about one square foot larger than the sign that was approved last month. Uh, otherwise, I do not believe that any of the other uh, measurements or dimensions have changed um, as far as you know, height of the sign and height from the top of the sign to the peak of the roof. Um, so we are just looking to add a little bit more descriptive uh, terms on the sign and hope that that will not be an issue. Thank you. Ms. McAllister? I don't have anything to add. Thank you, Madam Chair. Great. Uh, let's go through the board, see if we have questions or comments. Can we start with Lisa, please? Uh, I have nothing. Just thank you for coming back to uh, dot your I's and cross your T's. I have no issue. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Peter? Same. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick? Good. Paul? I'm all set. Thanks. Great. I too am totally fine with what you're proposing, and I think it's going to look very nice. So thank you. Um, given that this is a public hearing, are there any members of the public that wish to be heard on this matter? If so, we need your name and your address. And if you'd like to use the raise your hand, I'm waiting for someone to raise their hand here. Got a lot of people on this call, but. Let me give it a couple seconds. All right. No further comment. Can I get a motion to close the public hearing? Motion to close. Can I get a second? Second. Great. All in favor, Lisa? Aye. Peter? Aye. Patrick? Aye. Paul? Aye. Mary Beth, aye. Wonderful. Um, so can I have a motion to approve a variance modification to amend the text of the previously approved sign at 378 Maple Avenue? Motion to approve as stated. Can I get a second? Second. Thank you. All in favor, Lisa? Aye. Peter? Aye. Patrick? Aye. Paul? Aye. Mary Beth, aye, and so moved. Thank you very much for your time. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. You're welcome. Okay. Next up. Madam Chair? Is, yes. I have to recuse myself from the next hearing. Thank you. We have um, Mr. Matthew Armenti will be standing in for Mr. George. Is that correct? Wonderful. Thank you. This is to hear the appeal of 526 Hartford Turnpike, the point at Hill Farms. 
located in the limited industrial Route 20 overlay district. Smart Growth LLC is the applicant. This is for a modification to a comprehensive permit granted November 28, 2016, pursuant to the provision of Chapter 40B, Section 20 to 23 of the Massachusetts General Law to allow for reduction in the density of units. The public hearing for 426, I'm sorry, 526 Hartford Turnpike is a new public hearing. Could the applicant please introduce themselves and explain the application to the board and to the public? We've got a hand raised. Somebody going Hello. to. Hello, Madam Chair. Yes, sir. Uh, Wayne Bellick, Lane Design Collaborative. How are you? Good, Wayne. How are you? Good, thank you. Uh, thanks for uh, having us. Uh, sorry for, uh, I was just fighting with my audio, uh, which is, always seems to be a challenge. So I've got that working. I'm using my phone. So thanks again for having us. Uh, what we're looking to do tonight is to provide the board with an update uh, since we last met with you on March 29th, when you rendered the project as uh, being not a uh, insignificant project uh, causing us, or the modification being insignificant, uh, causing us to go uh, through the process. So we have gone ahead, uh, we have submitted uh, an application uh, with you folks to modify the comprehensive permit. Uh, as part of that, we provided a brief narrative of the existing and uh, proposed conditions, which I hope you have had a chance to read to give you a, uh, an overview of, of the project itself and uh, you know existing conditions and proposed. So as noted in the application in the in the narrative, uh, the proposal is to reduce the units as you're aware. Uh, number 440 was sold, currently under owner by another development. So this would look to uh, separate uh, the two properties uh, uh, or that number 440 from the conference permit. So that's basically where we are. Since we last met, uh, the town staff was kind enough to arrange for uh, a meeting, as I, we indicated to you folks, uh, we would be looking to try to do, and we were successful in doing it with their, uh, their assistance. We had a, a meeting with town staff, uh, which comprised the DPW and your peer review of com uh, consultants, Weston and Sampson, and uh, Tater and Howard to discuss the off-site mitigation uh, improvements and the reduction there too as a result of uh, these uh, reduced uh, units being proposed. So that's basically where we are. We understand that uh, and Bernie can weigh in, uh, but we understand that uh, the town is in the process of receiving some uh, proposals from these guys based on the meeting that was developed or the scope that was developed in that meeting uh, and are looking to review the information that we uh, provided them with our peer review consultants, uh, and, and that's basically where we are. I also have joining me tonight, uh, friends already of Smart Growth Design LLC, who may want to offer a couple things before we respectfully open it up to you, Madam Chair, and the, the board for any uh, questions that you have. Fran? Can Store you hear me six. now? Yes, we can, yes. Mr. Zaretti. Okay. Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, just for the record, Fran Zaretti, I'm the applicant, Smart Growth Design, LLC. <clears throat> um, as you know from the filings that we, we uh, did last month, the original project was 248 units, and we're down to 92 units, uh, which is called phase two of the original project. Phase one was 156 units, which has been eliminated. So we reduced the project by a little over 63%. Um, in terms of my involvement, now I'm gonna be talking about quickly is the offsite mitigation. Um, originally, um, the offsite mitigation for sewer with the combined project because of the size of it, there was approximately 17 sewer pipes that needed to be upgraded uh, with the total combined project. Right now with the reduced project, we're down to six pipes that have to be addressed. And one of the six, uh, we already put in about two years ago on the Route 9. Uh, we put a new pipe on the Route 9 before they paved it. 
And so now we're down to only five pipes that need to be uh, reviewed by the, the town consultants, peer reviews, and the DPW. Um, also, the original project encompassed three pump stations that the flows are going to because of phase one and phase two combined. Uh, right now, there's only two pump stations on the review because uh, one of the pump stations, the third one, was involved with phase one, which is no longer there uh, for this project. So we're just going to be evaluating uh, two pump stations. Uh, so that's really where we are with the sewer in terms of the, the reduced scope uh, of the offsite mitigation. <clears throat> Quickly with the water, um, the original project um, required a 2,300 foot uh, water main extension in Route 20 um, because it was going down to phase one, which was a dead end prior to getting to phase one. And that had pressure problems and flow problems. So a new water main was going to be put in. Uh, we no longer need to do that. It's my understanding that uh, whatever's proposed down there will have very little water flow than fire protection. So um, the new 2,300 foot water main is no longer needed. What's um, we tied into a phase two where we are now, um, the existing water main has adequate flow and adequate pressure. And therefore there's no mitigation needed now uh, for the water main. So again, all these things will be vetted through the town uh, peer review consultants and the DPW. And we'll get into the hydraulics and the chemistry and the pressure and all that the next hearing when when everything is is being brought out and vetted at the next hearing but just to give an auto magnitude of what uh the reduction was i just wanted to touch the surface uh qualitatively tonight and we're going to ad uh, address it quantitatively at the next meeting thank you thank you very much mr zaretti um mr cahill i'm not sure who wants to go first bernie uh, yeah, I can certainly make a comment or two. I think Wayne and Fran did a great job summarizing. Um, I just confirm with them, but I, be I believe, and having looked at the site plan that has been submitted to us, there are no changes, and I think this is important for the public to be aware of as well. There are no changes to the site plan. So the surface plans that were approved in 2016 are not changing. So we've posted them online. You can see the plans on the Point at Hills Farm website, as well as I believe the material pages and I guess for this is just the Point of Hills Farm website. Um, so the web page that we have, uh, we do have it there. And pretty much it is literally they are taking away the what was phase one. But what you're seeing there, the surface plans, things like landscaping, grading and that type of those types of things that were approved last time remain the same. Those are not being changed um, from the planning department's side uh, what we're looking at is again to work with dpw as fran alluded to as wayne alluded to to figure out the infrastructure under the ground what's happening um given all the changes for route 20 uh, and so on that's going on there we just want to make sure that as the changes get made we incorporate that into the decision and we're going to be offering to the board a um a modified decision based on the 2016 to see those changes you can visibly see them between before the next meeting we don't have it done now we're waiting for that uh, kind of those details we worked out with uh, Andy Truman, the town engineer and DPW. So we'll have more for you also at the next meeting. Um, and we're gonna try, we're gonna ask and see if uh, Andy Truman as well, Mr. Truman can join us uh, at the next meeting if he has time. Um, so I'll, I'll just leave it there. There really wasn't too much more to add from the planning department side. Uh, so I'll, I'll hand it back to you, Madam Chair, thanks. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Uh, let's go through the board, see if we have questions or comments, Lisa. Sure, Madam Chair. So uh, thank you. I, I'd like to just, I think, point out some things to the public. Um, not sure if many of the people on the call were able to be at our last zoning board meeting um, where this came before us. So um, the comprehensive permit and at the last meeting, this board agreed that this change going from uh, just phase two to the 96 units, uh, despite it being less units, uh, we did feel it was a substan substantial change to the project. And so we really appreciate Mr. Bellick and Mr. Zaretti's um, going through the comprehensive permit process again for this modification. I did look at the, um, I was the only board member um, current board member that was part of that lengthy 40B process. Um, and I know I went to every meeting and know all the details. So uh, 
I appreciate what was done. I, I appreciate the two updates to the sewer capacity and the water. Um, I'm looking forward to our consultants review of those. Um, but I'm very happy that that's been part of the comprehensive. It will be part of the comprehensive permit process. One thing, Mr. Zaretti and Mr. Bellick, I, I am hoping we're also going to see is a new traffic uh, uh, study. Um, when I look at what was last proposed, um, we had a number of options for a traffic light at the um, west end near phase one, but now because phase one is not happening, um, I will just put it out there. My opinion is that the traffic light at Stony Hill East, though it was rejected because of public comment and, and whatnot, I think now that should be revisited. Um, it was originally rejected, but now that phase one is not happen happening, I do believe it may be the more attractive option. And, uh, and may not require the restricted no left turn out of Stony Hill West. So I'm just putting that out there. I think we're going to need to address traffic as part of this uh, change as well. So thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Madam Chair, if I could respond to that. Um, I do appreciate it, Lisa. That particular uh, component of traffic, when we looked at the traffic, we looked at it at, at you know, both sites. So we looked at both sites combined, and then we looked at both sites individually. In fact, each of the sites have their own independent uh, MassDOT uh, traffic uh, permits. When looking at phase two of the mitigation, Lisa, you have a great memory. Uh, and in looking at the, uh, the discussions that had uh, occurred over at phase one, and more particularly, the discussion about the traffic signal on that, uh, that western site down at uh, phase one. That, that particular signal, if, if Lisa remembers, and I'm sure she does, it didn't trip the warrant, so that, that had gone away. All the improvements down at that intersection, on the westerly intersection, are specific to phase one. So any improvements that needed to be done on the project needed to be done as a result of phase one, which is no longer under the ownership of Mr. St. Pierre. So with that, I am uh, sure that whatever is being proposed on it at, at phase one, there would be a revaluation, reevaluation of the traffic study associated specifically with those uses to phase one. As indicated by Bernie, and we concur, those improvements over at phase two haven't changed. And so the, the improvements that were proposed in the public way right of way were nothing more than a curb cut permit to MassDOT. So the numbers and looking at the, the report does break it out into both phases one and phase two, and then looks at them combined in the mitigation. And, and as we as we know, uh, that whole discussion, you know, phase two discussion uh, with respect to the improvements and most particularly the traffic were addressed and everybody was in agreement early on. It was pretty much phase phase one in those improvements in the improvements to Route 20. So, but great, uh, great point. But I think at this point, I think that, uh, and I say this with, with a bit of confidence, that um, the traffic study that was done for specifically uh, phase two holds true today. Madam Chair, can I follow up? And then I'm sure yes. Mr. Zaretti would like to comment. Um, so when I, I appreciate that. I, I don't believe a traffic study necessarily needs to be done again, um, but I think either our consultants or, you know, consultants on your part, I still think that should be looked at again now that phase one is not in there anymore. And let's just take the numbers from the study of, you know, Stony Hill East and the traffic that's going on there um, and take a look at that again. Um, how do I want to say it? We, we looked at that, all of us looked at it as, phase one and phase two happening. So the traffic light toward the phase one side, the west side, um, we thought that we, how do I say it? 
that mitigated or was included in whatever was going to be done in phase two. So that traffic light plus the curb cuts uh, for phase two would have handled the whole situation. Now that phase one isn't there, I still think there is an issue on the Stony Hill East side. Um, but rather than take take over the meeting, we'll let Mr. Zaretti um, respond, and then I'm sure our abutters are likely to have a comment about that too. Mr. Zaretti. Okay, Madam Chairman, thank you. Um, to address Lisa's question, um, we with the combined sites. Um, we did not meet the warrant for state to put a traffic light. We were going to put it in anyway as a voluntary uh, procedure, but it was rejected by the state because it didn't meet the warrant. Also, <clears throat> phase one had a right in and right only restriction. Um, and therefore, we looked at the traffic light because of that scenario. But now that phase one is gone, phase two has unrestricted turns. Um, at that particular point. So with the, the traffic capacity is down to one third of what it was. And this has an unrestricted curb cut that's been approved by the state. So um, we'll never get a light no matter what we try to do there, regardless of what the state master plan is going on now, because the South Street issue that came up last week in the newspaper that's trying to try and eliminate left turns. Um, if that's the case and left turns on the subdivision, left turns on on South Street down below, then the state's gonna look at this more differently and maybe they would want traffic lights put in at these certain intersections, but it's certainly not warranted uh, with phase two being only one third of the size and it has unrestricted turns. Thank you. Okay. That helps. Thank you. Thanks. Um, let's get uh, Peter. Uh, nothing to add at this time, Madam Chair. Thank you. Patrick. I'm good. Uh, Mr. Armenti? No questions at this time, Madam Chair. Thank you. I feel like all the questions got covered by um, prior conversations. So um, given that this is a public hearing, um, I'd like to ask any members of the public to present questions or comments that they have. Please make your comments brief <coughs> to the point. And we'll be looking for your name and address, please. And I see that Mr. Peter Riley has raised his hand. So let's let him go first. Good morning, Chair. Uh, this is Chairwoman. <laughs> can you hear me? Yes, we can. Uh, I, I have two two specific questions, and, and we might want to leverage Lisa's uh, Lisa's experience with this project. Um, but my, my first question to the board was uh, back in 2016, when this original application came before the town, there was a significant uh, financial analysis that was done on the 300 unit um, proposal. And my question is with such a significant uh, deviation from the original plan, has the town uh, asked the applicant for a revised financial projection and does it meet the requirements? Bernie, can you address that? The town has not specifically asked for a revised financial analysis, but it does meet all the requirements for a 40B and comprehensive permit. Thank you. Uh, follow up question, if I could. Please. How does the town know that if they haven't asked for the analysis? I'm sorry, I didn't hear the last part of that. How does the town know that it meets all the requirements if they haven't asked for the analysis from the from the proponent from the proponent? Mr. Cahill? Yeah, um, we've so we've looked through what was covered for phase two and given the changes, um, we haven't noticed that anything um, substantial has changed. So it's gonna be the, still the same phase two. So my understanding from the previous one was that each site phase one and phase two were evaluated on the merits of each, each site, almost as if they were separate projects. Uh, Wayne can probably elaborate on that even more than I can, uh, or Fran, um, since they are the proponents. 
So I'll see if Wayne has a response you just as well. Headed on the help. You just headed it on the head, Bernie. They were pretty much, even though it was one project, each site was pretty much independent of itself. The only time they they were they had a commonality is with the proposed off-site mitigation, which, uh, as mentioned earlier, is being evaluated uh, by the or reviewed uh, by the town uh, peer review consultants. So, Fran, if you had something that you wanted to add as well, um, yes, um, we, we did an extensive evaluation initially based on return on costs, and it met it met the formulas. Um, the financial analysis reviewed by Wendy Cohen, the town uh, consultant at that time, and they did pro formas uh, to evaluate it. If anything else now, the pro forma is helping with the smaller project and with less upside mitigation. So if anything, the project economics has improved by bifurcating the project. So I don't think there's any issue there with, with the financial analysis. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Riley, a point of um, order. Can you please state your address? Yes, I'm sorry. 19 Pheasant Hill Drive. I apologize. Thank you. Thank um, you. Just an another follow-up on that. My understanding was that I believe that there was a state agency that uh, was involved in the financial analysis to get the approval for this to be uh, to meet the requirements of a 40 p I don't know the ins and outs of it all, but I would ask the ask the board and the town to look into any ramifications of that. The, the second the second point that I wanted to make, and maybe I misunderstood Mr. Zaretti, um, but my understanding of the, uh, the the phase that remains in the project, as far as traffic flow was concerned, the uh, the, the exit out of the development onto Route 20 was a right turn only um, component of the plan. And if I heard Mr. Zaretti correctly, and I, maybe I didn't, I got a sense that he said something about unrestricted term turns. Did I mishear that or am I mis misunderstanding? Mr. Zaretti? You are. The, uh, it is unrestricted. It's right in and right out, left in, left out. So, Phase two is restricted turns. Okay. All right. We've got a lot of people on this call, so I want to make sure that we give enough time to everyone Madam here. Chair, is, is, Matt, is it is Attorney Rod St. Pierre? May I speak? Yes, Attorney St. Pierre. Good, good evening. <clears throat> good evening. I think <clears throat> very simply, and it's that as we are talking about the project, there's nothing changed in this approval. Uh, from the 92 units. What was approved by the, by the, by the ZBA is still today. Nothing's changed above the ground. The only thing we're looking at is water and sewer. It's not even on site. It's off site. That's what's being addressed with the town engineer, DPW, and the peer engineers and peer reviews. So nothing has to do with the site. The, we're still going on Route 20. Stony Hill Road is still going to be emerging access. The bill is going to be the same, and the, the unit apartment mix is going to be the same. So the only thing we're talking is, is below the ground and not even on site. I just want to make that very clear to the board. You know, what was approved has not changed. And just yeah. to kind of clarify it. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Um, anyone else wish to be heard on this matter? Please raise your hand. <coughs> Identify yourself, please. Uh, Mr. Vetter raised his hand. Can you please identify yourself by your full name and your address, please? Hi, my name is Alden Vetter and I live at 15 Pheasant Hill Drive. Um, so one thing I noted is you are not continuing forward with the addition to the water line and the sewer line. And one of the things of note that I heard you say was that the water line does not need, need to be extended <clears throat> because there's no units being built at phase one currently. However, you said the only use of that water would be for fire. So are you shortchanging the the supply for fire for the second down by the phase one area, that half of the development in those buildings down there? Mr. Bellick? That Mr. second Zeray. half of the Yeah, so that second half, we're, we're specifically talking about phase two at this point. That second half of the development will be addressed 
uh, by the new owner uh, at phase one. Thank you. May I follow um, up? Yes, Mr. Vetter. So the comment I'd like to say though is, yes, phase one, if they build units, they're gonna to need to address it. But the thing you seem to be missing is you are using capacity by building units up here at phase two. So that capacity is no longer there to supply the other houses such as Thistle here, Hill, Deer Run, um, or even Tri-State Truck Center or any of those other buildings that are there. Thank you, so, Mr. Cahill. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Zaretti, could you give us a second, Mr. Um, Cahill? The, to address the gentleman's question, there's two, uh, there's two water Let him go. Okay. There's two water pressure systems. There's an intermediate water pressure and a low water pressure. We're on the low part water pressure system with this project. The other system that the main is going to be extended is a whole different water pressure system. So we're not short changing them because they're not interconnected. Thank you. Mr. Cahill, anything further to add? I just wanted to add that. So DPW is, like I said, uh, at the top of the top of the agenda item, um, is working together with them, uh, with these developers, um, as well as the new owners of 440 Hartford Turnpike to make sure that anything that's being done is going to conform to the standards that the town holds um, for water pressure, water supply, et cetera, et cetera. So um, nothing's gonna be taken away from anyone. Uh, DPW's on top of this. So no changes are gonna happen without DPW's approval on this. Um, this is not something ZBA itself is going to um, write restrictions for, if you will. Uh, what come, What is going to happen at 440 Hartford Turnpike? We just don't know yet, but it will not be phase one of the um, or of the project, right, of 40B. So that is not happening. Uh, the only thing I've heard generally from the new owners is that they intend to do some sort of industrial or commercial development there. Uh, what that is, we don't know yet, um, but their needs will have to be met as well. And DPW will make sure that what they're asking for and what is required on the site um, is met. Um, and that if we have to do as we did with Eddie and Mr. Bellick, um, come to an agreement for offsite mitigation, then that's what will be done at the time. Thank you, Mr. Cahill. Thank Anyone you, else in the public wish to be heard on this matter? Okay, I think we've given uh, Mr. Muzandar, Guza Muzandar? Gurudas Muzandar, yes, Gurudas Muzandar, thank you. Can you guys hear me okay? We can, can you please give us your address? Yes, uh, 14 Thistle Hill Drive um, in Shrewsbury. Thank you. So the question I had was kind of following up to what Peter Reddy had asked, the ZBA approval, uh, from my understanding was based on Shrewsbury not having 10% of the households below a certain uh, or a property to be rented below a certain threshold. Has that changed between then and now? Is the approval valid for, for the current time frame because of the significant change in the project? And I'm asking because I don't know. So this is this is purely yep. trying to understand it. So I'll, that, that was my question. Thank you. Thank you. Good question. Mr. Cahill, can you address that, please? Yes, certainly. So. Um, what is not at for debate right now is whether or not the um, comprehensive permit approval is valid or not valid. It has been approved and it continues to be valid. Work has started on the site. Um, and at this point, it cannot be denied by the town. Um, the approval from 2016 stands. It was provided an extension a year and a half ago and continues to be valid and work is moving forward on the site. Um, as for whether we meet the 10% threshold of affordable housing units in Shrewsbury, although it's unrelated to this project at this time, um, it is, I think, at 6.3%. So we are not at the 10%. But even if we were, this had been in the in the past four years, somehow got over that 10%, this would still be an approved uh, comprehensive permit. Great. Thank you. Thank you for the response, uh, Mr. Cahill. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. You're welcome. Anyone else wish to be heard on this matter? Okay. I think. Madam Chair, I think Mr. Peter Riley, Riley raised his hand again. Uh, Mr. Riley. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Um, 
just a just an observation since so much so many of the board are brand new but contrary to to what mr saint pierre said I, I think the board made the decision in the last meeting that this was a significant change to the the proposal that was made prior to that going from 248 units to 92 units what what i find somewhat interesting and somewhat challenging all in the same breath is the fact that when the original proposal was presented to the town many of us in the local community tried to look at both of these parcels as separate parcels and we were told five years ago that that's not the case that it was a one single proposal and that we could not separate parcel one from parcel two now five years later it's to the betterment of the developer who has financially rewarded himself by selling parcel one and now he stands in front of us in the town and makes the proposal that this is no change whatsoever that this is now phase two it, it is something that they need to and we need to look at uh individually and, and i just that, that just does not set well with me and i don't think it should set well with the town mr zaretti um the the project was, was approved as one project but um there are a lot of projects that are multi-phase projects that approve and sometimes they're built out sometimes they're not we're not here debating the approval of the project we're not here debating the 40 b we're only debating what the offsite infrastructure changes are going to be based on the reduction in the size of the project. We have a right to reduce the size of the project. You can have a 40 B with five buildings on one site and only build three buildings and not build the other two buildings on the same site. So that's been done uh, before with other projects as well. So just because you have two phases doesn't mean that you're mandated to build the two phases. Thank you. Unfortunately, that's not what you said five years ago. Ma Madam yep. Chair, may I comment? Yep, Ms. Cassatt, please. <laughs> so uh, respectfully, I understand Mr. Riley's position and I also understand Mr. Zaretti's position. And uh, as the only board member that served on the comprehensive permit before, I have to say, Mr. Riley, that I did treat this as one project with two parcels that could happen or not happen. So I agree with Mr. Zaretti's point, actually. When I made my ruling, I knew that one part of this could happen and the other couldn't. Um, and uh, to that end, however, last month, I voted that this was a significant enough change that we need to at least look at water and sewer, and that is what the appellant is doing, and I thank them very much. And I'll make one more comment on the traffic, if you don't mind. Um, Mr. Bellick and Mr. Zaretti have clarified things much more for me. Um, I did go look at what was proposed for phase two, and uh, I, I'm less concerned by that. I would appreciate, however, if we're going to have another meeting, if we could just have the schematic shown to the public on what the phase two, if we're going to have another meeting, um, what the phase two curb cuts and the unrestricted terms are, and I can make further comment that will make sense then, but I, I'm not asking um, that a new traffic study be done. I'm not asking for a different proposal, um, just clarification. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Sutton. Mr. Mulcahy, did you have a comment? I was just going to say that would be helpful to me as well. Thank you. Okie doke. Okay. Excuse me, Madam Chair. We do have those within the site plans uh, currently before the board that was submitted as the application. So uh, we can either do that tonight or we can wait till the 21st of uh, or 24th of May uh, for the continued yeah, our wish the board. We're going to likely continue this. So, um, okay. I see a hand raised by Mr. Danielson. Steve Danielson, please identify yourself with your address, please. Yeah, this is Steve Danielson, 75 Stony Hill Road in Shrewsbury. I uh, just had a question. Did uh, What is the status, and this is maybe unrelated, uh, but because it might be too far out, but what is the status of uh, they were going to widen uh, Route 20 to four lanes with MassDOT, and does that impact any of the uh, setbacks to the buildings? 
So that's a great, Madam Chair, that's a great question. So I think Fran alluded to uh, earlier uh, about some improvements that are being uh, done out there. I know MassDOT has a plan and we have, when meeting with MassDOT on this project, uh, they had some preliminary plans early on about making those improvements. Our understanding is that there are some plans in play. I don't know to what, and Bernie may be able to weigh in on this, but there are some plans uh, with MassDOT that are, in a, that are in a certain state of design. Uh, I'm not sure if they're 80% drawings or where they are, but our understanding is that this section of Route 20 uh, would be constructed within the next five to seven years, maybe sooner. Thank you. Bernie, do you have any further comments on that? Uh, I can look into it more. I, well, the exact timeline, well, if, if MassDOT has one, I don't believe they do. So the master plan was completed last year in 2020 for the entirety of Route 20 in Shrewsbury. Um, they are also, speaking of phases, going to be doing it in phases. Part of it's happening with the market basket project, um, that section of it. Um, but it is, as Wayne said, meant to be developed over the next actually five to 10 years is my understanding of the window. So. Um, as for its impact on setbacks, um, I just don't know right now. I would have to speak to Mass DOT and see if this part of the DOT, if you'd need to take land. Um, it's I just don't know it right now, um, but we can look into it certainly. Okie doke. Anyone else out there wish to be heard on this matter? Mr. Muzandar has raised his hand again. Please go forward. Yes, yes. thank you so much again. Um, I, and this may be a question for the board. Um, have you guys, you guys said you haven't received the plan for what will be the new plan, I guess, for what phase one used to be. Um, is there a timeline for when that will come into play? And is there something to be considered of how both of these projects, the phase two and what the new part of phase one will be may impact, whether it's traffic, whether it's water, whether it's sewer, just, just understanding both sides of the plan is that, is that important and is there a timeline for either of them? And, and that's a question for the board. Thank you again. I'm going to let Ms. Cosette pick that one up. Uh, or maybe uh, yeah, Mr. Cahill. But um, the, the parcel that phase one was to uh, be developed on is now owned by someone else entirely. And now um, they will go through the planning board and, and other boards and you know, create a site plan. It's completely outside of this comprehensive permit for 40B. So um, we don't take that into consideration if it were being developed at the same time, perhaps. <laughs> and if they had to come before us for zoning, we would definitely know what was going to be going on there, but it's no longer part of this project. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else wish to be heard on this matter? Peter Riley has his hand up again. Uh, Mr. Riley? Uh, if I did, I, it was inadvertent. I apologize. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. I suspect that we're going to look to continue this hearing. Um, Unless there's no other public comment, um, is there a motion to continue the public hearing? Motion to continue. Can I get a second, please? Oh, do I have to state the time? Motion to continue on May 24? Yes, please. Yep. At 6.30 p.m., I believe. Yes, thank you. Seconded. Can I get a second? Seconded. Thank you. All in favor, Lisa? Aye. Peter? Aye. Patrick? Aye. And Ms. Dormenti? Aye. Mary Beth, aye. So moved. Thank you all for your time. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the, the board and town staff. We look forward to seeing you on the 24th. Thank you Thank very you again. much. Bye -bye. Thank you. Wonderful. Our last agenda item for this evening, which falls under new business, is to hear the appeal of 334 Grafton Street, Paul Gaudet. This is a request to waive requirements to submit an application for proposed modifications to a previously approved plan. Uh, I believe Mr. Ricker is here to introduce himself and explain the request and the waiver to the board. 
Yes, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, for the board and for the record, uh, my name is Richard Ricker and I'm an attorney with law offices at 11 Maple Avenue and I'm representing Paul Gaudet, uh, who is also the principal of uh, Dan Matt Realty LLC. Um, the request before you is uh, for your board to consider the changes that he would like to make to uh, the plan that you approved uh, for variances and special permits. Uh, that we would ask that you consider those changes to be insignificant to the extent uh, that they do not affect uh, or would not reasonably be expected to negatively affect uh, the bases for your decisions on granting the aforementioned variances and special permits when you did. Um, basically, the uh, changes that we're talking about would reroute the driveway um, the 20 foot wide driveway that we talked about uh, from the sharp turn in front of the residential house at 334 Grafton Street. Uh, it would run up the side, as you can see from the um, most recent plan, it would run up the side of the house, um, basically next between the house and the existing greenhouses on the, on the property. Um, there is a gravel driveway up to a point past uh, just at the end of the house now. Um, uh, it would run up past the house and the greenhouses to the westerly sideline and then over to the proposed parking area for the building, which the building and the parking and uh, they all remain the same size, um, just some different orientation. Um, you can see uh, from the submittals that I've given you that uh, the three most impacted neighbors here uh, that are down on Grafton Street, um, I would suggest emphatically have uh, endorsed this change. Um, they like it. Uh, it's further away from the uh, residences down on Grafton Street by 10 feet, basically, on, in terms of the parking. It backs up to the uh, Home Depot parking lot. Um, I would suggest that uh, there isn't any basis to suggest that this would cause any any harm to anyone. Um, if anything, as you can see from the neighbor's letter, uh, which I believe you have signed by three neighbors, uh, uh, Edie Diodato at 332 Grafton Street, Alex Sandy at 338 Grafton Street, and Kevin Bedini at 328 Grafton Street um, have all endorsed uh, this plan. They've, they've signed that letter that is in front of you. Um, I, I think um, in as much as the town planner has noted to you that uh, there is no um, um, formula uh, before you um, in the bylaw for you to make a determinist uh, determination. I would suggest that what I'm asking is just that. It's, it's uh, where you can look at something like this plan that, that uh, you had approved at, at a meeting, discussed um, and considered. Um, you can look at this and you can consider whether or not this would ha this, these changes would negatively impact your decision. Um, and I would suggest to you respectfully, and I hope that uh, you would consider that th it would not change your opinion. If anything, uh, where you have the neighbors uh, all in support of it, if anything, it's a better plan. It's, um, it, it is better suited for the neighborhood uh, and for the neighbors. Um, I, I have submitted to you uh, the Black Law Dictionary uh, definition because, and I looked in Bobrowski, um, Peter, I looked in Bobrowski to see whether uh, he had anything to say at all about this uh, type of uh, de minimis or any definitional issues or anything like that, and, and uh, he doesn't. So um, I, I had to resort to Black's Law Dictionary where, um, as you can see, they uh, suggest that um, uh, the um, the determination would be of a fact or thing so insignificant that a court may overlook it in deciding the issues of a case. That's exactly what I'm asking you to, to determine here, is that these changes would not have changed your mind and uh, that they do not have really a bearing on uh, the issue of uh, variance in the first place, um, or special permit for that matter. Um, as you know, the, the, the lot doesn't change, uh, the circumstances don't change. Uh, and I would suggest respectfully that um, I, I would consider if, if, if you were to find a basis for de minimis, that this would be a beginning of, of defining that, that basis. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, members of the board. Thank you, Attorney Ricker. Um, Mr. Cahill? 
or you no, know, I can actually take this one. Um, Rowan, and Jared, please. If you don't mind. Um, well, like Attorney Richards Recker said, uh, Article Three, Section Two of the ZBA Rules and Regs do give the board um, the ability to waive any uh, requirements for application or application itself. Um, however, as noted in my comment letter. Staff does feel that the proposed changes are too complex uh, to forego additional review, uh, public hearing, et cetera. Um, in particular, we are concerned about the hardship that was discussed uh, with the variance and whether it's, uh, or, excuse me, the variance for the common drive standard, excuse me, common driveway standards, um, and whether that is still maintained. Uh, and secondly, just that this new driveway runs through an additional lot um, and whether that change has any impact to the detriment of the neighborhood. So I would ask the board to just consider those as well um, and uh, happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Rowan. Um, let's work our way through the board, see what we comments or questions. Um, Ms. Cassette? Sorry, there's a fire there's truck going by. Fire truck head Okay. Nearby. They're gone. <laughs> Good. So um, hmm. I have to say, before reading any comments, getting any comments from uh, town planning department, um, I'll give you my feelings on voting something as de minimis. Um, I it sent up alarm bells. <laughs> I'll say that. Um, so I'm. I'm not comfortable making a ruling, determining whether a previous uh, approval, or a change to a previous approval is de minimis or not. Um, you know, that's okay for a comprehensive permit like we just had in the last hearing. There's rules around that, but we don't have anything uh, about that. Um, Ms. Ms. McAllister mentioned the bylaw about waiving a requirement. Um, but that is when an applicant is applying, you know, submitting an application. Um, we consider waiving requirements at that time. As far as the variance that we approved last time, it was the part that's been changed here. It was on a non-conforming driveway using constructing and uh, using a non-conforming driveway. So I was comfortable granting that variance, um, but this is this is a change. So um, I'm not sure procedurally what we would need to do. Does when something like this has happened in the past, does the applicant have to reapply? Uh, Ms. McAllister, <laughs> no. Correct. Yes. Oh boy. We would need to apply for a modification. Okay, so okay, so that's our process. They reapply uh, for the modification. It's for one of the variances. Um, I don't know what that is. Is is that cost prohibitive? <laughs> you know, what is the cost to them to do that? Um, do, can I have an answer to that? <laughs> it's a three hundred dollar filing fee, and it's an additional no matter what. And it, and it's an additional hearing. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, so I'll, those are my comments at the moment. I'll wait and hear from others. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mulcahy. Uh, sure. So I um, tend to agree with Mr. Ricker that it is within the board's power um, to declare something uh, de minimis as, as to a change. Um, and I based on the um, information from the neighbors and and what I've seen, I I lean towards agreeing that it's de minimis. However, um, I was not a member of the board that approved the initial variances. And so I would tend to defer to the members who were there um, in their judgment, who looked at it closely and heard all of the um, arguments, both sides. And also the fact that the planning department um, feels strongly influences my uh, thoughts as well. I would say that in the same way that it's within our power um, to, you know, waive things and declare things de minimis, we could potentially waive the application fee um, if that made things easier for them to come back. And I, I would support that. But um, so that's all I have to say for the moment. I want to hear what everyone else has to say. Thank you. 
Right. Great. Okay. Um, Mr. Fullen. Uh, just uh, one question was um, when we did approve this in the beginning, I know that there was a lot of discussion about the uh, width of the driveway and everything else like that. Is that going to all remain the same as we had spoke of? May I answer? Yes, please. Uh, yes, uh, it will remain the same. Yes. And to ad and and to address um, part of what Mr. Mulcahy said as well, um, one of the factors here is timing, um, uh, and the extra month or so or more lost um, in the construction season. Um, that that obviously is driving this request as well. Sure. And um, I would note that uh, I think Mr. Armenti, who's here tonight, was on that was on that board. Um, right. So I don't know whether he wants to comment. Um, let's see, Mr. George, any comments from you? Uh, my thoughts on this project are still the same. I wasn't in favor of going through the two different zones with the driveway, so I still feel the same in regards to how I felt before. Okay. Not, can I ask a question, Madam Chair, yes. Mr. Yes. George? Um, I recall the um, you weren't comfortable with this use on this property. This is partial, partially resident. Can you just allow your thoughts were? I just didn't feel it was uh, proper to go through two zones for uh, a certain use. Okay. Madam Chair, may I make a comment? Yes, Mr. Cahill. I just want to remind the board to please stay focused on the request that's before them this evening. So the request is very specific right. of asking a waiver to not submit um, an application for a special permanent variance modification. Um, that's what's being asked before the board. I think Rowan, uh, Ms. McAllister made it pretty clear, uh, planning boards, planning, excuse me, planning department staff's um, opinion on the matter. Uh, we think the relocation of the common driveway, the relocation of the parking spaces, um, all lend credence to submitting a application modification um, to the board. It's Obviously, it's not personal, it's professional. We would, this is a process question. We have a decision right now that references a plan that is not this plan. Um, so it's unclear actually what would happen if the board were in fact to waive the need for a uh, not providing a, an application for modification. We'd have a decision that references a plan that would no longer be valid. Um, and also, I also, as the building department does and Ms. Sheehan always reminds us is that we also try to look towards the future, that these lots that are currently runs over may not be owned by the same people in the future. Um, but also just as importantly, the variance as Ms. McAllister said was based on a different plan. Um, and it's not clear that the hardship still pertains to it. I myself am struggling to see why it cannot now be brought to a complete um, common driveway standards, now that it no longer, for the most part, goes over an existing driveway, um, which was one of the reasons and hardships that was stated in the prior applicant uh, application, excuse me. So I just leave that to the board, but I just wanna stay focused so we're not here all evening um, trying to discuss other things. The real question is, is do you wanna see this come back for an application and a public hearing um, to rewrite the decision, or do you want to um, allow for this change without another hearing. So that's that's really the question before the board tonight. And Madam Chair, thank you for allowing that uh, extra time. Thank you, thank you. Um, I will comment that I am struggling with the de minimis change as well. Um, and um, to some degree, I'm going to acquiesce to the expertise of Bernie and Rowan um, and their suggestions on um, whether the hardship still exists. Um, this is this is a difficult one. I certainly understand that time is ticking away, and um, the applicant would like to move forward. But I um, I am I'm concerned about what um, is is being put forth in front of us as well. Um, and if I'm reading the board correctly, I think that might make uh, a full board on that. So um, 
Is there anybody else that uh, wishes to comment on this? Any other loose ends that we should consider before we move this forward? Madam Chair, I make a motion to deny the request for de minimis change. Second. I Thank you, Patrick. Um, all in favor, Ms. Cosette? Aye. Um, Mr. Mulcahy? Aye. Mr. Fullen? Aye. Mr. George? Aye. And Mary Beth Lynch, aye. So move motion to deny. Okay, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Good night. Good night. I think that brings an end to our illustrious evening of zoning matters. Can I get a motion to adjourn, please? Motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you. All in favor, Lisa? Aye. Peter? Aye. Paul? Aye. Patrick? Aye. Mary Beth, aye. So moved. Good night, everyone. We'll see you in a month. Thank you. For your Thank time. you, everyone. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.